Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here. Practicing to take the GRE general test, the 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. It has seven real exams. The problem that I'm about to solve is out of the second exam number two on page number 200. Quantitative comparison number 14, the penultimate one, second to the last one. They're all together 15 only. Let's see what the problem has to say. It says the sum of the length of the two sides of an isosceles triangle is 7. Alright, so we have an isosceles triangle. Sum of the two sides. The handwriting is lousy. of an isosceles triangle is 7. The very first thing we need to understand is what is an isosceles triangle? This question being number 14 tells me that the majority of the people who took the exam got it wrong and as a matter of fact if you want a more precise information about three quarters of the people who took the exam got this particular question wrong when this exam was given. Only 24% got it right. And one of the reasons why 24% or why three quarters of the people uh, did not get it right is perhaps because they do not, uh, be, perhaps because they were not familiar with the terminology. These are things that you have learned in your school days, years and years and years ago. You learned the elementary geometry, elementary arithmetic, elementary algebra and so forth, and it's not fresh in your mind. And if you don't remember this, remember these terminologies, if you don't remember the basic concepts, then I hate to use the technical term, but you basically screwed. It's important that uh, that uh, that you know these uh, terminologies uh, uh, on your fingertips. An isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is a very special kind of triangle where triangle, of course, by definition has three sides. That's why it's called triangles. And an isosceles triangle is where. where two of the three sides are equal to each other as opposed to a triangle where all three sides are equal and that, uh, that triangle is referred to as an equilateral triangle here's an equilateral triangle here all sides are equal that is an equilateral triangle we are dealing with an isosceles triangle where two sides are equal to each other but I don't have to, I don't have to go on to explain that we are dealing with an isosceles triangle where the two sides are equal because that is a definition of an isosceles triangle we are dealing with an isosceles triangles. And we are also told that the sum of the two sides is 7. And then it goes on in the next sentence to tell us that one of the sides of this triangle K has to be 4. One of the sides has to be 4. Maybe the 4 goes here, maybe the 4 goes here, maybe the 4 goes here. And so we have to look at all three possibilities and that's all. Well, where does the 4 go? Well, which, which is what we're going to do here. But anyway, where does the 4 go? Who knows? The triangle that we're dealing with, they call it K. These people who give you the exam, they have a nasty habit of christening all the pictures. The triangle K, the circle P, the square Q. They, every shape that appears, they, they give it a name. This particular triangle that they're dealing with, they're calling it K. Don't freak out about it. Don't make a big fuss about it. So there are three, po there are three possible places where four can go. We are told in the next sentence, that this triangle has a side of length 4. So let me, let me put the 4 here. If the 4 goes here, then since these two sides are equal, the 4 has to also has to go here. And we are told that the sum of the two sides is 7, that tells me that the remaining side has to be 3. And then I'm asked to compare the perimeter of this triangle the perimeter of this triangle and again, that's the terminology that you have to know. Perimeter simply means the sum of the length of sides. So perimeter of this triangle is the perimeter of this triangle is 4 plus 4 plus 3 which of course equals 11 and in the second column I have 
I also have a lemon. This is our column B. This is our column A. This equals 11, that equals 11. So the based on the work that we have done so far, the answer is C. You see how, how carefully I qualified my statement? And again, if you do not know, if you did not understand the usage of the word qualify in this particular sentence, look up the word qualify and learn it. It, mean, it means to put a restriction on something. It means to, to, to equivocate something. To, to, if you want to say it in the colloquial terms, it means to attach strings to something. I did not say the answer is C. I said based on the work that we have done so far, the answer is C. I qualified my statement. Is the answer C in fact? Well, it could be. We do not know yet. All I know, based on the work that we have done so far, all we can tell for certainty is that the answer is not A. And why is the answer, well, what makes me so cocky to, tell, to, uh, to assert the fact that the answer could not possibly be A in this question? Because A means, had I picked answer choice A, what uh, we would have claimed is that the quantity in column A is always bigger. The quantity in column A cannot possibly be always bigger because we found one instance when they are equal to each other. We also know that the answer for this particular question cannot possibly be B. Because the B would have meant that the quantity in column B is always bigger. The quantity in column B cannot possibly be always bigger because we have found one instance when it is not. The answer is C or a D. What other possibilities are there? Well, I know there are two conditions we have to fulfill. One condition is that one of the sides of this triangle has to be 4. So I put a 4 here, which meant that was automatically 4 because these sides were equal. How about if this 4, instead of being here, had it appeared here? There is no reason that prevents me by putting the 4 over there. If this, is, if, that is, if this bottom side is 4, then this side is 3. And if this side is 3, then that side is 3 as well. Okay. The fact that this 4, this side, actually looks smaller than these two sides, don't worry about it, it's not drawn to scale. This 4 can appear anywhere. So if this, is, this, is, if this 4 is one of the sides which is not equal to the other side, then 3 has to be the other side, and then the other side has to be 3. The sum of this particular triangle that I showed you in the red is 3 plus 3 plus 4, which is 10. And now I'm comparing 10 versus 11, the answer changes. Now the answer is B. Since I'm getting conflicting answers, since we're getting conflicting answers, therefore the correct answer, the correct answer is, it cannot be determined which quantity is bigger based on the information that is given to us. The answer is undetermined here. So therefore the answer is D. And that's what it was. I hope you understood, I, I hope, I didn't mean to say you understood it, of course you did. I hope you found it helpful. And I hope uh, that, uh, that uh, it makes uh, things a little bit clearer. Uh, that's what it is. It's not the math that uh, trips people off. It's just, it's just learning how to take the exam. Taking a standardized exam is a skill. You have to learn how to take the exam. It's not the math that, that, that is difficult. The math is quite straightforward. Anyway, if you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, face-to-face -face tutoring, or if you wish to buy the solution manuals to these problems in this book, or if you wish to talk to me about any aspect of the GRE, go to my website at www dot prep p r e p prep f o r four g r e dot com and send me an email. It is also important that you also work on the vocabulary. The one of the best things that you can do to improve your score in the verbal part of the exam, the the reading part, the reasoning part, the the sentence corrections, everything, is important that you have a good command of the of the, of the vocabulary. Which is why once in a while I introduce words as as they appear in my in my speech. Uh, if you go to my website. Click on the vocabulary books and you will find there the, 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 the sources, the books that I like to use uh, for my own clients. And if you're interested in any of those books, again, send me an email. All right. Thank you.